Hey everyone, Mr. Sujano here, your source for gaming tech emulation and open source news and sometimes reviews. In this video, we're taking a look at what I think is the best webcam currently on the market, the Insta360 Link 2C. Let's get started. All right, to kick things off, Insta360 sent me this Link 2C for a fair and honest review, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. Now, they say the Link 2C has a half inch sensor, it goes up to 4K resolution here, it does do 1080p at 60 frames per second. It's got AI noise cancelling and true focus. Inside the box, we've got the Link 2C webcam, the monitor mount, as well as a USB C to USB C cable and a USB C to USB A adapter. The cable here is pretty long and the adapter is pretty nice. The monitor mount for this camera is made out of metal. It doesn't feel cheap. It's got a bit of weight to it. And on the bottom here, it is threaded if you wanted to attach it to a tripod. Additionally, the monitor mount is magnetic and it's a very strong magnet. So you don't really have to worry about that webcam falling off or anything. So here's a close up look at the Link 2C camera. Now this camera, in my opinion, is the exact same camera and lens used in the Link 2. The only difference being that this one does not have the gimbal. I might be incorrect in that, but I don't think I am. On the back of it, it's powered by a USB-C port. And on the top here, we've got that very large grill that is your microphone. Now, the big difference I've seen between the Link 2 and the Link 2C here, aside from the fact that the Link 2C doesn't have a gimbal, is the fact that the Link 2C has this lens cover switch. The Link 2 doesn't have this. The gimbal tilts the camera down for privacy. I am a big fan of this lens cover switch. I'm a big fan of privacy and well, this is nice. So right now you're looking at me through the Insta360 Link 2C at default settings. It's sitting at 1080p and 60 frames per second. In my opinion, it's looking really, really good. It's nice and crisp. Now I do have my YouTube lights on, so I've got one light directly in front of me and two lights on the side here. And what I'm going to do is turn those lights off and see what this thing looks like in the dark. Normally, I just cut the video, I'll turn the lights off, and then start the video again. But I'm not going to do that. Let's do this in real time. So I'm going to turn this light off here. Turn that light off on the side, and I'll grab the last one over here. So now I've got all the lights off. I'm still being picked up a little bit. I guess there is one light behind me. But overall here, I am being picked up a little bit. I'm not seeing a whole lot of... I would say frame loss. Yes, there's a bit of noise on the camera, but at the same time, it's not struggling too bad. It seems to be doing okay. And this is obviously less than ideal lighting. Anyways, I'm gonna turn that light on and see how it adjusts. So you can see I'm instantly blown out, but the camera does try to make an adjustment here. And well, I'll turn the one on on the side as well. And it adjusts a little bit better. And then I'll turn the other one on. And there we go. I am noticing that the camera takes a bit of time to adjust to the light changes, but really not that much. And it seems to dial it in pretty good. And again, default settings. I'm not tinkering around with any of these settings to get this set up. Now at this point in time, I've gone on ahead and turned off my desk lights. Not everybody has YouTube lights or lights dedicated to filming. And I've gone on ahead and turned on the overhead lights in the room and that's it. And I would say that this scenario is probably one of the most common ones for people using a webcam. Is it ideal? I would say no. Looking at the picture here, you can see it's a little less clear than it was just with those lights shining on my face. And that's, I would say, because the camera is struggling trying to compensate for the lights above me, behind me, and also in front, I guess. But at the same time here, this picture is okay. However, what I'm going to do now is just turn on the lights behind the camera, and you can see immediately how much that's going to affect the camera and the overall quality. That is just one light. And now we've got two lights on, and let's turn on the third. And there is the third light. And I would say that this camera does a lot better with lights behind it shining at you. So for example, if you've got a desk light, it's probably worthwhile to place it behind the camera and not rely solely on the overhead lights. Now at this point in time, I've brought up the Insta360 Link Controller, which is the companion app for this camera. And I've turned on HDR. What I'm going to do is turn that HDR off and you can immediately see it darken and brighten. It takes the camera a bit to adjust here. But I'm noticing that the colors also changed a little bit by just enabling HDR. I'm looking at the PlayStation lights in the background there, and they do seem a little bit off. It's a little bit weird. Um, 
Interestingly here, I think I prefer HDR off, but let me know your thoughts about that in the comments below between HDR on and, well, HDR off. Now, interestingly here, I said the camera was set to 1080p 60 by default, and it does appear that the default is 1080p 30. So I'm just going to push that up to 1080p 60, and let's see what happens here. In my opinion, the motion looks a lot better than it did in 1080p 30. That's very interesting. So we were at 1080p 30 before, not 1080p 60 like I thought. And you can push this one all the way up to 4K 30. And I will say it may introduce a little bit of latency. Oh, maybe not. So interestingly here, when I tried this out on the other camera, the Insta360 Link 2, it was before a major firmware update. And I'm looking here now and the 4K 30 is not delayed. I am really liking this. I'm not noticing much of a delay, not really noticing latency at all. So whatever magic they worked in the background, they have really improved this camera. Now I am noticing my beard is a little bit sharp. So what I'm gonna do is turn that down to 50. I think it was set at 60. Anyways, let's turn that down to 50 and well, there we go, see what happens. It still looks a little bit sharp, but at the same time here, well, we're in 4K. So what I'm gonna do is just move my hand close to the screen. Actually, I'm gonna hold something up close to the screen here spill stuff on my desk. I got a cup of water beside me. Um, anyways, I'm going to hold this up to the camera and let's see what happens when I put it close and move it away in terms of autofocus and adjustments. So I'm noticing it's not really focusing on the numbers too much, but again, it is right in front of the camera. And wow, that's pretty quick to adjust. So it takes a little bit to focus and it's not fully focusing on those numbers. And it's almost instantaneous to focus back on my face. And then you see the color adjustments, the temperature adjustments slowly happen. Now, all of this is at 4K 30, and I'm very curious to see if there's a performance difference at 1080p 60. So let's roll this back to 1080p 60 from 4K 30. And in my opinion, this is a great picture. Anyways, I'm going to stop talking about that for a second. Let's see how this does. I'm going to hold this up to the camera. I can't see the numbers very well. It's still struggling to focus on them. Oh, there we go. Oh, wow. Maybe I just had it too close before. I'll pull it away real quick. Does a quick job focusing. And then, yeah, the color temperature and the, the gain adjusts very slowly afterwards. So let's retest this back in 4K 30 and see if I get the same result here. Maybe I just won't hold this numpad right up to the camera. Maybe just give it a bit of distance here. So we're back into 4K 30 and I'll hold it right here. Oh, wow. That focus is quick. That is a really quick focus. So note to you, I guess, and also me for using this camera, don't hold everything right up close to it. Just leave a bit of a gap. Maybe, I don't know, what is that? Three quarters of a foot, half a foot, give or take. I don't know. Anyways, it's just, that's quick. Okay, so overall, I'm very impressed with this focus. Now, additionally, you can also manually adjust the autofocus, the white balance, all of that stuff if you want. And normally, I recommend this for a lot of different webcams. I find the auto settings aren't normally that great with a lot of different webcams. Uh, but let's try the white balance here and see what happens if it goes from blue to red or blue to yellow. Um, yellowy red, I would say. So to get this as close to lifelike as possible, yeah, I would say maybe auto is the way to go here. I mean, this is really close. Auto, that's a little bit too cool. To be fully transparent with you, this is a little bit more cool of a picture than in real life. And if I were to do manual here and just warm it up a little bit, I would say this is, eh, give or take, it's a little bit more accurate to real life. Uh, there is a little bit of pink. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say you can, can, you can tinker around with this if you really want to, but I would say at the same time here, it's probably worthwhile just to leave everything set to auto. I mean, even focusing, yeah, the autofocus does a fantastic job. So I'm just going to leave it there. White balance, autofocus exposure. This is a great job by Insta360. Now, additionally here, it's worth pointing out that this camera does have gesture controls. They've got auto framing, a whiteboard setting, and zoom. Now, I don't have a whiteboard, so I can't test that out. But if you wanted to test out auto framing, you put your hand up like this to the camera, and it throws you right in the center.
And yeah, you can move around a little bit and it'll throw you back into the center. Now, in order to do this, they do have to zoom in a little bit to crop the picture and then move in within the crop. So as soon as I go out of auto framing, it should take me back to where it was. Oh, maybe not. Guess if I go into view here, yeah, it zoomed in at 1.2 times. So I can zoom back out to 1.0 and oh, there we go. And I can auto zoom. So if I do the L sign here and move straight up, that should zoom me in. And down should zoom me out. Well, this works a lot better than it used to. So whatever update here again, this is magic. Before I was really struggling with the zoom control and now not so much. Now for full transparency, I like just to turn the gesture controls off and not worry about it. Yes, they're cool features, but at the same time, I don't need them. I can control them within this app or I can actually control them with a smartphone and that's absolutely fine. I not necessarily, I talk with my hands. So one of the problems I run into is accidentally triggering those gestures and that doesn't happen when they're turned off. Now, moving on from that. And the next thing we're going to do here is check out the audio. You've been listening to me through an Electro Voice RE20, which is a very professional broadcast microphone. So what we're going to do here is just move this out of the way, test the internal microphones here on the webcam and I'll be fully transparent. I'm not expecting a whole lot, especially compared to this microphone. So let me know your thoughts about how the webcam sounds. So at this point in time, you're listening to me through the Insta360 Link 2C microphone. And I would say this is typical for a lot of webcam microphones. I actually can't hear it right now. I'll have to hear it after I record it, but I'm assuming it's going to be similar to the Link 2 that I tested out earlier on. Anyways, this is set at voice focus. And for reference, I've got a laptop beside this monitor that has really loud fans. So I'm wondering if it is picking up those fans. Uh, I'll turn it into voice suppression here. Let me know if you notice any difference in my voice from going from voice focus to voice suppression. And the last thing we're going to test out here is music balance. And I'm not quite certain on how this one is going to sound, but let me know your thoughts about this one in the comments below on music balance versus voice suppression. And then going from voice suppression to voice focus, which one sounds the best to you? Now we're shifting over to Linux. And I would say this is one area where I think this camera really shines. I'm at 1080p 60 frames per second here. And I'm looking and things look really good. I don't necessarily know if the camera is running at 60 frames per second or if it's stuck at 30. I've got it manually set to 60, but it kind of looks like it's set to 30. Anyways, here looking at this camera overall, and I can configure the color on this one. I've got my YouTube lights on, I've got my green screen up, and things look to be going very well. I am very pleased with how this camera works in Linux. So let's get into my likes, my dislikes, the price, and whether or not I'd recommend the Insta360 Link 2C. And based on the intro to this video and also the title, you probably already know my answer to that. Anyways, we'll get into my likes here. First and foremost, I like that sensor. The half inch sensor works very well in low light conditions and very bright conditions. And I would say overall, provided you have the right lighting, this camera performs very well. I would say the picture is nice and clear. I would say the color corrections, the white balance, the, the whole gain aspect of it, the auto adjusting of the focus, everything works very good in auto settings. I was very impressed with this as a plug and play camera. I mean, yes, you can tinker around and make it look even better and tweak it to your liking. But at the same time here, this camera functions wonderfully as just plug and play. Additionally here, I like how well this camera works on Windows and I'm very pleasantly impressed on how well this camera works on Linux. Some cameras hate being used on Linux and this is not one of them. I like the built-in privacy shutter. I can just flip it here and close off the camera if I want. I can open it up pretty easily. I like how quickly everything adjusts. I'm just, I'm a big fan of this camera overall. The motion controls work very well. The companion software works very well. I just think everything about this camera is a nice little package. And I also like that it doesn't have a gimbal. You don't have to worry about that stuff. I just think it's extremely convenient. And now shifting into my dislikes, and I do have a couple of them just to be fair here. First and foremost, the microphone. I listened back to the audio and well, it's standard for a webcam microphone. You probably wouldn't want to use it as your primary microphone. Some people can get away with it. Maybe if you don't have an echoey room or something, then sure. My room is echoey and that microphone was not liking the treatment of this room. On top of that, I'm not the biggest fan of the fact that this camera has a bit of latency in some situations. So if you don't update the firmware right away, there are some issues with the camera and 
that is one area where plug and play is probably not the best option. As soon as you get the camera, I recommend plugging it in, using that Insta360 software, and making sure the camera's firmware is up to date. And now let's look at the price. At the time of filming here, this camera is priced at $149.99, so basically $150. And at $150, would I recommend this camera? And the answer here is 100% yes. I think this is going to be the best camera in 2025 in terms of webcams. It's definitely the best one now in 2024. Now for full transparency, I am allowed to say whatever the heck I wanted to about this camera. This is not an advertisement and this is not a paid review. I am under no restrictions. I said to Insta360, if you wanted to provide a camera for review, I'm giving it a fair and honest review. If I don't like the camera, I'm gonna say bad things about it. If I like the camera, then I'm gonna say good things about it, and it's a risk they're gonna to have to take, and they're gonna to have to trust me that I'm gonna do a video on it. Anyways here, I can confidently say that the Link 2C is the absolute best camera that I have ever tested, and it's my favorite one. I am not joking with you here. Insta360 is not gonna like me saying that I like this camera more than the Link 2. I think the Link 2C without the gimbal is a better option for me anyway, and probably a better option for a lot of people if you're not moving around. It's like $50 cheaper, it's the exact same camera overall, it just doesn't have that gimbal. And I overall think this is a complete good camera. I think this is amazing, I think it's an amazing product in 2024 and probably also for 2025. This thing is absolutely awesome. I was very blown away by it and I have tested out a whole lot of cameras. And I mean a whole lot. And this one has been better and easier to use than all of them. In terms of webcams, things are really hit and miss. And the one camera that I kept going back to was the Logitech Stream Cam. I just found that it worked very well in Linux and Windows. It was easy to use and gave me a consistent picture. But that all changed when I got the Insta360 Link 2C. Let me know your thoughts about that one in the comments below, but honestly here, this picture, everything that I've experienced has been fantastic. But anyways, that is all I've got for you in this one. Straight to the point, all stuff and no fluff. Shoutouts to Insta360 for providing the Link 2C for a fair and honest review. Let me know your thoughts about it in the comments below. And if you like this video, leave a like. If you didn't like this video, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button, check out my other videos. Don't tempt fate, save your state.